that's it. But here is a real life situation taking place in front of me. You better listen to the Holy Ghost. And I bound the spirit of death and released the spirit of life. And all of a sudden, the guy that was with the, his hands on the trigger and they had us all surrounded began to just wobble, just wobble. But I didn't know what was going on. I'm just doing what the Lord said. Now, I can't do it loud or it has to be done quietly because they told us not to say anything unless they ask you something through the, you know, that's what they, I, they told the interpreters. So everybody sat there, I mean the guys. And so all of a sudden, this is what happened because it, it, it's so much to it. They let us go, but there's a man that they killed that was next to me. In the middle of all of what was taking place, I heard a truck coming around the corner. It was changing gears, and you could hear it changing gears. And all of a sudden, the, the, some of the rebels ran to the corner, and as the truck came around the corner, they jumped out on it with their, with their guns. Well, you'd never believe what truck it was. It was a Coca-Cola truck. And I remember saying to myself, what in the world is Coca-Cola doing here? They're everywhere. Coke is everywhere. <laughs> they hauled the driver out. And he's a very tall, slim man. And he sat up next to me. And they were lecturing him because he worked for what they considered to be a foreign company. And especially an American company. Well, they kept him and other people that they had held also, and they released us. When they released us, we stayed there because we thought they were going to shoot us in the back. So we didn't move. And they motioned again with their guns. So we finally, after two and a half hours, we, we got to the, our jitney. And then, as we were going to go, they ran and grabbed it. So we thought they were playing mind games with us. Oh, our heart, you know, your heart is just... But I knew that I wasn't going to die. After a few minutes of holding it, they just released it, and we, 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 uh, we went about our business. Now, this is the revelation. This is what happened. That night, our other team members, Filipinos, were coming up, and these same rebels grabbed them. Now, you, you, we're in the house of the Lord. You may think that this is an exaggeration. It is the truth. They took them up to the hill and tied them behind up on a tree. Our, our staff, our Filipino staff. They, not knowing what happened earlier, because they weren't with us. You following me? They overheard the, the rebel commander saying to the ground, the guy that was doing the interrogation on the ground when we were there, why didn't you bring that foreigner up? We could have held him for ransom. And this is, this is a quote, I have it in, in our newsletter. He said, when I saw that foreigner, I began to just get lightheaded and I forgot what I was supposed to do with him. And he released us. That was just a sheer miracle of God. There are other parts too, like when I got up and tell him what happened, and I had to preach that night in an in a open-air meeting with one little light down and my interpreter and myself. And as I looked out, you couldn't see anybody because it's so dark. But it was packed with the city and a uh, little village, I should say. And the enemy was working in my mind. He said, well, the, the, a sniper is out there, and as you begin to preach, he's going to take you out. But I kept preaching. I said, God... Well, you brought me this far. If I die, I die. But I just preached my heart out and had the service give an altar call. The altar was packed and we ministered to the people and then we went to our little hut where we were staying. One big, big, big bed connected where all eight of us, the seven Filipino and I, lay down and, and they said, we have a choice to make. They said, if we go further and for our second meeting, which is in an area called Tundog, you're going to probably encounter more of the rebels up there. But we can either go there or we can go back. 
And that night, I agonized in my heart. I said, if, I, if we go back, they're going to say, um, we thought you were a man of faith and power. And if I go forward, that may be lack of wisdom. So I made a decision around midnight. I said, you know what? I don't care what you think of me. We're going back. <laughs> and then he said, okay, we're going back. And then they, the driver said to us, well, we have to figure out when we go back. And they came up with a plan. Let's go back around 2 a.m. in the morning. And what we're going to do, you sit on the back of the jitney, because it's, remember, it's like jungle, it's intense. And he said, we're just going to floor, just drive up and down. And if we encounter anything, at least you're way in the back, you can jump off into the jungle. Beloved, I told them, you just take me straight to the airport. Don't bring me back to where my luggage was, straight to the airport. I didn't know when this, these little tiny planes were coming in. But they, they, we, we got there, and I was able to get on the, the plane, which came about four hours later, and got back to Manila. God was good. God is awesome. We had something similar in Pakistan. We had a doctor, but that's for another time and another place. But God is awesome. These mission trip that pastor goes on, it may seem good and nice and, you know, impressive, and we've had some great, great, great uh, uh, places and times, but it's not always like that. We never dictate where we're going to go. We are driven by our purpose. And if we're in the will of God, then God protects us. Amen. God bless you. That's why I love this. He is a man with purpose. We are stupid men of God. That's what we are. Yeah? We're the scum of the earth. But boy, it sure feels good. Amen. Can we move this? Let's call our elders up here and the pastors and their wives. Pastor Dave and your wife. Pastor Alex. Pastor Aldini pode vir aqui na frente. Pastor Dave, would you stay right here in front of me with your wife? Would you look at me? And right up here. We have our chaplain, one of our deputies. He's one of our chaplains with the Native Americans doing a great job with the Indians there and also with many, many uh, veterans. Like Pastor Paul was, Pastor, would you kindly come to you? And we all have to make our own history. We don't know how we are going, but we want to go the way God has. Pastor Dave was telling me, I believe one of our pastors back home went in college and he was preaching and if it happens to be true, he went to see the Lord preaching the gospel. And Pastor Kale died preaching the gospel. And what a way to go. Pastor Alex, Pastor Alex, pode estar atrás deles. Pastor Dave, I, I, I don't know how to say it, but I feel like a big shot now. As you being there, a uh, teacher, teaching us about evangelism, I hated you. I did. It put me with the wrong partner. I would kick dust. I never wanted to be with that Mario Bruni, that Italian. Nothing against Italians, Pastor Paul, but <laughs> said that he put me with an Italian partner, you know? And God was using Mario as my sandpaper to brush me up. And after that, Ronnie became my partner. But we would never think that we would meet here and your wife in this wonderful day. And it's my joy and my pleasure to 
give you the International Christian Chaplains Association badge that you may wear honorably. And everywhere you go, we know that God is there behind you. I'm going to ask your wife to place it on him. I can hear the one that you ripped in there. Thank you. Would you raise your right hand? Chaplain. Yeah. The, uh, the oath first, and then the prayer. Would you all stand with me? I solemnly promise, as a chaplain of ICCA, that I will provide comfort and spiritual support to the police and fire departments and the citizens of the community when I am called upon. I further promise to do my best to be ready and be available to all those in need. I promise to provide comfort and spiritual support to all persons without bias toward religious affiliation gender, orientation, race, ethnicity, age or any other such designation. I will always strive to set an exemplary standard of ethical and moral conduct. I acknowledge those in the authority of the ICCA and I will serve them with loyalty, honesty, and diligence. I accept these responsibilities without hesitation or reservation. So help me God. Thank you, Pastor. Now we're going to pray, and then I'll have a Portuguese prayer with one of ours. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you called us to follow the path of the chaplain. Help us serve those who might others might forsake, those who are elderly, ill, or destitute, financially, emotionally, or spiritually broken. Let us be a fountain of support and comfort to those who serve their community and country in the emergency services or the military. Give us the wisdom and strength to help the suffering and find the measure to erase or lessen the pain. Make our words and deeds reflect your teachings and instill hope and renewed faith in your goodness and love. We ask that you make us instruments of faith and healing. Make us your voice to those in need. Make us the compass to those who have lost their way. Make us part of your sacred works. Guide our hearts and actions in all we do. We ask this in your most holy name. Amen. Pastor Radisham, Professor Radisham. So I'm going to ask you to place your hands over them at this time, or raise your hands upon his wife and, and the sisters. You can lay hands on them. Pastor Dick's wife and all of our pastors and chaplains that are here. God bless this man and the mission and Jesus the esta oração que nós te fazemos nesta manhã, crendo no teu poder, no teu amor, na tua graça. Te apresentamos esse casal para que através dele o teu nome seja glorificado hoje e sempre. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you all. Pastor Dave, Sister, we, I am so honored to be here today to impose on you this command. May, may the Lord go with you. May the Lord surround you with all of its benefits and its goodness. May he impute in you the health of a youth to continue to do what you need to do. And may the Lord touch you both and bring jealousy to all of those that would still think 
that your race was over. This is the second, second breath of Israel, Jacob, as he stands up to give his blessings to his grandchildren. So you may leave this place today with the rights to call myself ministers of the Lord and also call yourself as a chaplain. Congratulations. I'm going to ask both of you to, before we go, we're going to take on our last offering. We want to bless Pastor Paul, Dr. Paul, as he leaves. We're going to leave the basket up here. And those that would like to bless him, bless him financially. We'll give him a wonderful offering. Pastor Dave, you and your wife, please go to the back door so people can congratulate you. In Jesus' name. May the Lord be with you, hold you, and keep you. May his light shine upon you. We'll see you Wednesday here at New Destiny once again for the Word of God. God bless you.